Technology is strategic to the business models of digital organisations. And as such, higher demands are placed upon the life cycle of these organisations' digital products. These demands can be represented by five objectives that translate purpose and strategic objectives into more operational objectives and indicators. The five high-velocity IT objectives are valuable investments, fast development, resilient operations, co-created value and assured conformance. It is important to remember that these objectives should not be managed in isolation. The five objectives are outlined in Table 2.1. The scope of the Valuable Investments objective includes identifying and justifying digital investments that would contribute significantly to business strategy. This exercise should result in a good understanding of a digital investment's potential value, anticipated costs and return on investment, and the defined criteria for its utility. The warranty should also be determined. Warranty ensures that an investment's potential value is not adversely affected by outages, poor use or other factors. Making valuable investments is founded in market research and the development of new products. Ethical principles should be used to make investment decisions that consider a broad range of stakeholders' interests. It is also important to continually evaluate investments after they have been justified and approved because more valuable options for investment may exist. The scope of the fast development objective includes realising new and improved digital products and services frequently, quickly and reliably. Development refers to product development in general, although application development is often included in that. In general, the sooner digital products are delivered, the sooner value can be realised. In addition to being fast and frequent, delivery must be reliable. Fast development has no intrinsic value, it is related to the value of whatever is being developed. Under business pressure to realise value quickly, agile development teams deliver potentially deployable software increments as frequently as possible. Unfortunately, these releases often have to wait for days, weeks or sometimes months for actual deployment, which is often the longest delay in the value stream. This usually occurs because of a widespread cautious approach to approval and deployment. Typically, part of the approval process is an assessment by a change advisory board that only meets on scheduled days. The actual deployment also often happens according to a schedule. Therefore, there is a potential conflict between fast development and resilient operations. This tension is based on a familiar mental model in which change disrupts stability and stability controls change. The fewer the changes, the lower the risk to stability. More recently, a different way of thinking has emerged. By reducing the size of change, the risk of disruption is reduced. Smaller changes also mean that change can happen more frequently. By changing more frequently, the organisation's capability to change is improved. Increased change capability leads in turn to lower risk of disruption. Figure 4.6 demonstrates the effect of change size. The DevOps community has embraced this way of thinking and has developed appropriate practices and supporting technology. Research suggests that change approval based on peer review within the team is no less risky than using a change advisory board. The scope of the Resilient Operations objective includes ensuring that digital products are available for use whenever needed. The potential value of digital investments can only be realised when those digital products and services invested in are available for use. Fulfilment of the non-functional requirements provides warranty and reduces the risk that issues will adversely affect the utility of the products and services.
The consumerization of IT has led to an expectation that corporate IT systems will be available anytime and everywhere. Resilience can be drastically improved by the cloud capabilities that are now available at a fraction of the cost of on-premise systems. Resilient systems and services are no longer a choice. They are a realistic expectation due to the cloud and the consumerization of IT. Resilient operations can be measured in terms of availability, performance and security. The scope of the co-created value objective includes co-creating value from digital products through the close collaboration of the service provider and the service consumer. Co-created value is about the service consumer using the service provider's products and services effectively and benefiting from their utility and warranty. A return on digital investments is only realised when people or things make decisions that are improved by information derived from automated information systems. In high-velocity IT environments, where service consumers use digital products and services on a regular basis, expectations are higher. Consumers demand a more intuitive and responsive user experience and customer experience. The better understanding service providers have of how service consumers use the IT service or digital product, the better equipped they are to support them. Co-creation is not only about the service interaction where value is actually realised, it is also about the consumer's involvement in service design and further development. The collaboration between a scrum product owner and a development team is a good example of the close collaboration between IT practitioners, business people and in some cases customers and consumers. The scope of the Assured Conformance objective includes ensuring that service provision and service consumption comply with corporate and regulatory directives with respect to governance, risk and compliance. Beyond ensuring conformance, it is also important to assure the accountable people that conformance has been achieved. While external requirements may remain the same, there may be alternative and more appropriate ways to fulfil these for digital enabled organisations. Assured conformance can be measured by the lack of security breaches, fines by regulators, bad publicity, actions required by internal and external auditors, and the cost of the measures to ensure and assure compliance with governance, risk and compliance issues.